Okay, today we are looking at electrostatics, electrostatica. Okay, here is a hoofstuk where means makkelijk punt te kry. So, jy moet net concentreer en dan, ja, die vrouw recht antwoord in die examen. Okay. Alright, so the first thing you need to know is that every single object in the world is made up of positive and negative charges. So if you have an object that has the same amount of positive and negative charges, then it's neutral. Good. So, a uh, <coughs> uh, voorwerp is neutral wanneer hy evenveel positieve en negatieve ladings Right. Good. Now, loadings, positive loadings, can nie verwijder word uit enige voorwerp uit nie. Positive charges cannot be removed from any object. Only negative charges can be removed or can be added. So, if you have more negative charges than positive charges, then your net charge on an object is negative. Goed, so jou netto lading is negatief. As jy meer negatieve ladings as positieve ladings het vir een sekere <coughs> voorwerp. Dan, <coughs> as jy minder negatieve lading sê, as positieve ladings, so jy het meer positief as negatief, dan is jou netto lading, jou net charge, when you have more positive charges than negative charges, then your net charge will be positive. Dan is jou netto lading positief. <coughs> Goed. So, Jy kan dus nou positieve en negatieve lading kry, afhangend van of jy elektrone verweider weg uit die voorwerp uit, of elektrone bijvoeg. So you can make an object positive or negative, depending on whether you remove electrons from that object, or whether you add electrons to the object. Okay, it's always electrons um, that are removed or added, are removed to form a positive charge. So, a elektrone word verweider <coughs> om positieve lading te vorm. En elektrone word bijgevoeg om negatieve lading te vorm. So, electrons. Electrons, you remember those of negatively charged, is added to form negative charge. Alright. Okay, now um, you can actually do a little experiment yourself where you can take a ruler and any piece of cloth and just rub the ruler in one direction the whole time, not up and down and up and down, just in one direction. Um, <clears throat> and then tear little pieces of paper and try to pick them up with the, with the end of the ruler. If you've torn small pieces of paper and you try to pick it up, you'll see that the small pieces of paper stick to the ruler. So you can do that. And then what you are observing is initially before you rub the ruler before friction. Um, all 
each proton has an electron. So you have a neutral charge on the ruler. So you have a neutral loading on the op die lineal in die begin en dan soos wat jy dit vryf as you apply friction onto this ruler you're forcing the electrons to one side so dan het jy jy forseer al die elektrone na een kant toe so wat jy doen as jy maak van die lineal uh, die poolbasis, wat een positieve en een negatieve kant het. So die kant wat jy vasthou, word positief, en die elektrone sit allemaal daar voor. Um, so the electrons all accumulate in the front. So now, if you bring this close to a little piece of paper, originally, the little piece of paper is also neutral. So oorspronkelijk <coughs> is die stikjes papier ook neutral, so vir elke proton is die elektron. Nou, wat nou gebeur, as jy hierdie negatieve ladings na by in die papiertje bring, is nou moet jy onthou, um, gelijk soortige ladings, gelijk soortige ladings, stoot, mekaar af. So you have to remember that like charges repel each other. In other words, negative repels negative and positive repels positive. So um, Negatief stoot negatief af, positief stoot positief af. So nou as jy bezig om hier so een spul negatieve ladings nabij aan hierdie neutrale papierkie te bring. En wat jy nou doen, is jy forseer die elektrone weg van die lineal af. So you're forcing these electrons that are close in the paper, close to the ruler, you're forcing them to go away from the ruler, so to accumulate on the far side of the paper, and you're leaving behind positive charges. So it will play positive ladings oor in die papierkie, en die negatieve ladings accumuleer die onder, aan die verste kant weg van die lineal af. Nou is door positieve en negatieve ladings langs mekaar. Now you have positive and negative charges next to each other and opposite charges attract. Opposite charges attract. Die nog gestelde ladings trak mekaar aan. And now, because there we have positive charges, there we have negative charges, the negative and the positive charges attract, and the little paper is going to get stuck to the ruler. So now we have the ruler with the little papers stuck to it because of that attraction force. Okay. Okay, now the next concept is the law of conservation of charge, the wet van behoud van lading. So firstly, you just need to know that charge is measured in coulombs. Okay, so lading word gemeet in die eenheid coulomb en ons koor dit af net met de hoofletter C. So we abbreviate it with a capital C. Right. This is the unit, the eenheid, fund it. Maar die symbool daarvoor in berekeninge, wanneer ons berekeninge daarmee doen, gebruik ons a key, hoofletter key. So the unit that charge is measured in is coulombs, but the symbol we use in calculations 
<clears throat> when we write a formula is a capital Q for charge. Okay. Is now for loading. <clears throat> Good. Then, the weight of behoud of loading, the law of conservation of charge, says that in an isolated system, an isolated system means it does not interact with any anything in its surroundings. Okay, it's isolated. The net charge remains constant. <clears throat> okay, so the weight van behoud van lading sê dat in a geisoleerde systeem. Geisoleerd beteken dat het geen kontak met enig iets buiten homself nie. So in a geisoleerde systeem is die netto lading constant of bly die netto lading constant. Goed. Nou, om hierdie te weis in berekeninge, to show this in calculations, we always have what we call isolated <coughs> stands. So, a geisoleerde stander. So, a Boe op die stander het jy nou jou lading. At, at the top of the stand, you have your charge. Okay? It has to be isolated because it needs to be an isolated system. So, this stand isolates the charge in there from the table that it is standing on. Right. So, as it nie op a, as it nie op a geisoleerde stander was nie, dan sou die lading net gelak het, en basis in die tafel in gegaan het, en verspreid het, en weggerok het. So, if it wasn't on an isolated stand, the charge would basically just leak into the table, move into the table, and basically get lost. Okay, but now it's on an isolated stand, and for Everything, all the calculations we do, we're going to have this either on an isolated stand or hanging on a string that makes it isolated as well. So I can of op a geisoleerde stander weer, wees of I can hang on a touwkie wat om ook isoleer. Goed, so daar is jou lading. Okay, so now what happens is let's say we have a positive charge here and a negative charge here. Sê ons, ons het een positieve lading, daar een negatieve lading daar. Um, of hier so, waar die twee nou bykie nader is, om elkaar een positieve lading en een negatieve lading. Nou, kom ons sê, die positieve lading is plus 4 kolom. Kom ons sê vir eers net kolom. En die negatieve lading is minus 5 kolom. Ok? So, let's say hier, Charge A is plus 4 coulombs and charge B is minus 5 coulombs. Now, because opposite charges attract, the two will attract each other and they will move closer to each other until they touch. The moment they touch, negative charges will move from the negative charge to the positive charge. So negative charges move over from negative to positive. Right? Until they have the same charge. So die oomblik wanneer hulle aan mekaar raak, gaan negatieve lading word oorgedra. Vanaf 
die negatieve, negatief geluide lading, vanaf die negatieve lading, na die positieve lading. Ok, totdat die twee ladings gelijk is. Ok, so, what happens there is negative charge is transferred from the negative charge to the positive charge until the two charges are equal. Negative charge is transferred from the negative charge to the positive charge until they're equal. Okay. Now, in calculation form, we can now calculate the new charge on each charge. What they have, the positive or the negative, is called a charge. And this thing that is charged is called a charge. Okay. So the new charge on the charge, on each charge, on A and B, will most now be the same. So that is equal to the original charge of A plus the original charge of B divided by 2. Okay. Because the law of conservation of charge says that the total charge stays the same. All right. The total charge stays equal. Um, all right. That's why we can just calculate the average, basically, between the two. So, um, the lading, the thing that is wordt een lading genoem, en die positieve en negatieve lading kies, op dit wordt ook ladings genoem. So, ons kan nou hierdie vergelijking gebruik, om die nieuwe lading op die lading te bepaal. So, lading B het een lading, lading A het een lading, en ons bereken die nieuwe lading op elke lading. Goed, so, twee goed met die selfde norm. So, die nieuwe lading is die oorspronkelijke lading van A, plus die oorspronkelijke lading van B, Gedeeld door 2, want daar al 2 het ons op die einde, die selfde. So, if we substitute, we have 4 coulombs there, plus minus 5 coulombs there, divided by 2. 4 plus minus 5 is minus 1, divided by 2 is minus 0 0.5 coulombs. So, the new charge on each... is now 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 coulombs for A and minus 0 0.5 coulombs for B. Now they are the same. Now they don't attract each other anymore. And now they will both just go back to their original positions. So now, omdat that it is self loading it, gelijk soorte geluide lading, stuit mekaar af, so hulle gaan mekaar nou nie meer aantrek nie, en hulle gaan nie terug na hulle oorspronkelijke posities. Goed, so hierdie berekening moet jy kan doen. Jy moet die nieuwe lading op ladings kan bepaal. Right. Ok, now the principle of charge quantization, die beginsel van lading kwantificering, beteken net dat lading kom voor in sekere grote spakkies. So, quantization, quantificering, beteken kom voor in pakkies van sekere grootes. Jylle het ook gepraat oor kwantificering, Toe jylle gepraat het oor licht, een foton licht is ook een pakkie licht, want licht word ook gekwantificeer. Um, we spoke about quantization of light, 
as well when we spoke about photons. One photon is a packet of light. So charge also comes in packets of certain sizes. All right. Now, the charge on one charge. Okay, and that can now be either a positive charge or a negative charge. The loading op een lading is, dit kan nou positief of negatief wees, is 1.6 mol 10 to the mach min 19 coulomb. Okay, that's the charge on one charge. So if you have one single electron that's being moved, you are moving 1.6 times into the power of minus 19 coulombs because that's the size of that little packet. Okay. As jy een elektron skuif of bykry of verloor, dan skuif jy verloor of kry by 1.6 mol 10 to the mach min 19 coulomb. Want dit, dit is hoe groot een pakkie lading is. Goed. So nou kan ons hierdie beginsel gebruik om uit te werk, as ons een verandering in lading het, hoeveel elektrone is dan nou oorgedraal? So we can take this piece of information and if we know what the change in charge is of a certain charge, then we can calculate how many electrons were transferred. So the change in charge over the charge of one electron gives us the amount of the electrons transferred. Okay. So the verandering in loading, van loading, gedeel dier die loading van een elektron geef vir ons die hoeveelheid elektrone oorgedraal. Okay. So, verandering in lading, sê nou ons het 1 kolom hier en 2 kolom daar en hulle 2 raak nou aan mekaar, dan gaan ons nieuwe lading moes nou wees, our new charge, if we have a 1 kolom and a 2 kolom charge, will be 1 coulomb plus 2 coulomb divided by 2. So that's 3 divided by 2. So that's 1.5 coulombs. Right? That's how we calculate the new charge. So now, the change, the verandering in loading. Verandering in loading is altyd gelijk aan die nieuwe lading minus die ou lading. Dis moes nou obviously hoe een mens verandering bereken. Jy vat die nieuwe ding, jy minus die ou ding, dan weet jy wat het verander. So this is always how you obviously calculate change in charge, change in anything. So you take what's new, you subtract the old, and then you know what changed. All right? So the new charge minus the initial charge. You begin loading. That gives you the change is change in charge. All right? And you know how to calculate the new charge with this equation. Charge 1 plus charge 2 divided by 2. Right? Okay. So now, let's say, yeah, we want to know how many electrons were transferred. So we know the charge on one electron is, you have to remember this. Well, you will always be given this as well. But 1.6 times the power of minus 19 is the charge on one electron. Um, it will be given 
in an exam. In the in the right of the back of the paper, there will be a an information sheet with that info. Um, they label it with a small Q and a little E. Okay. Um, so, ons hoeveelheid elektrone wat oorgedra is, is dan nou die verandering en lading, en verandering is een driehoek. Okay. A, a triangle means change. So this means change in charge divided by charge on one electron. Okay. This is the symbol for charge on one electron. Hier is die symbool vir lading op een elektron. So die hoeveelheid elektrone is die verandering in lading, driehoekjes verandering, oor lading op een elektron. So in hierdie geval is ons verandering, die nieuwe minus die ouwe, die nieuwe is 1.5, ou lading, jy kan enig een gebruik, kom ons gebruik 1, is 0.5, of ons kon gesê het, or we could have said, the new charge is 1.5, and we use the other initial one, minus 2, which gives us minus 0 0.5. Same, the difference there is the same. So that gives us 0 0.5 over 1.6 times to the power of minus 19. And no matter whether you get a positive or a negative answer, you are going to ignore the negative. Okay? So, om een negatief te mag ignoreer, trek ons twee sikkerigheidstreepies weerskante van die berekening. Doi righeidstreepies beteken absolute waarde. In absolute woorden beteken, ons gaan enige negatieve ignoreer. Okay. So, in this case, only in this case, where we need to calculate the amount of electrons, we're going to ignore any negative answer. So, in order to mathematically be able to ignore a negative answer, we draw these two straight lines on both sides of our calculation. Those lines mean absolute value, which means, absolute value just means we're going to ignore a negative answer, okay? So then you get an answer, and that's the amount of electrons. You can calculate the answer if you want to. That's the amount of electrons that were transferred to give us that new charge, okay? So an electron is a, a physical thing. That's why the answer can't be negative because you can't have less than zero of something. Okay. So you either have zero or more than zero of electrons. You can't have less. That's why you can't have a negative answer. All right. So that is everything that you need to know about this chapter. So then please do the activity about this work in your textbooks. And then I will also post the answers so that as soon as you are done working through the questions in the textbook, you can mark so that you know whether your answers are correct or not. So the activity is exercise 10 on page 90. Okay, so please make the summaries in your script first, all the summaries from this video, then summarize from your textbook, and then do this activity. After you've done the activity, please mark it. And this needs to be done by Friday, please.